What's going on everybody? This is Darren from Affordable Shoe Review. Here to review some shoes for your friends and you. And today guys, we're gonna be starting an interview series called Sneakers and Stories with some fellow YouTubers. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get a few more YouTubers to come on and interview with me. But today I'm super excited to have a special guest, um, a popular sneaker YouTuber by the name of Blake Yarbrough. You may have heard of him before, but I'm gonna go ahead and let him introduce himself. Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Blake Yarbrough. Thank you, Darren, for having me on tonight. Super excited to do this and hopefully, yes, you can get some more people because for me, I love to interact and talk with people about shoes. So thank you for having me on. I'm excited to do this. Awesome. So I'll have Blake's information linked down below in the description of this video. But without further ado, uh, Blake, let's get into the interview. So uh, right. first question, um, the probably the typical question that you would get in this type of interview. Uh, how did you get into sneakers? So what was the beginning for you? Yeah, um, so if you if you look at my social media history, my account only goes back a couple of years. Um, I've deleted it a couple of times, but I initially got into shoes like as a child, really. I, I really liked shoes a lot when I was young. Like getting shoes was always a big excitement for me, um, whether it was like back to school or like a birthday or maybe like a holiday. Um, but I could never have more than like one or two pairs at, at the most. Um, and so as I got older and got jobs and things, I got more interested in shoes and sneakers. Um, and I ended up working at finish line when I was in college for about four years. Uh, and that really, that really like amped it up for me, um, to where I was like learning about, you know, releases and colorways and the history behind sneakers and stories, which we'll talk about that later. But stories um is what really like got me interested in sneakers is this stories behind sneakers so it was really growing up and then mainly in college awesome yeah so i'm kind of the opposite right i i started getting into sneakers um probably about a year or two ago it was never really a thing on my radar um, my wife can attest that i've been one that once i find a hobby that i really enjoy you know i just dive really hard into that hobby um, so I went through like a phase of football cards and like collectible trading cards, uh, went into board games and things like that. And then eventually um, I found a video by Tom Stefaniak, who's another uh, popular sneaker YouTuber, and a video of him doing a Jordan 1 collection, right? And yeah. so in watching that video, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing that I've ever seen, right? And yeah. it just clicked for me right away. Um, and I have really enjoyed diving into sneaker culture and learning all about different brands, colorways, things of that nature. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, not as long uh, per se as some people um, getting into sneakers, but definitely in the past two years or so, I've thoroughly, you know, just gotten invested in sneaker culture. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's a good kind of point that you made that you're newer into sneakers. Um, I feel like sometimes there is like a gatekeeping uh, some people call it to sneakers in particular where people that have been in it a longer times feel like the newer people you know aren't maybe into it the same way that they are um, and that's something that bothers me because I have been into sneakers a long time and I still feel like it happens to me um, and so it's just that's I think that's annoying um, so I mean obviously everybody started at some point right you, you know you weren't born into sneakers so um, I think it should be more friendly and uh, I welcome anybody that's, you know, into sneakers. If you had questions or anything like that, I'm, I'm definitely always open to uh, have a conversation just because I love shoes that much and it's cool to meet somebody who shares that same interest. Right. I'm, I'm afraid, you know, that sneaker culture might slightly be moving towards the people who have been at longer view the newer people as resellers. Like, oh, you're getting into it because of the hype or because of the money that's involved yeah. in sneakers, even though, you know, like for me, I believe that I truly have a passion for sneakers, but some people may view it as, you know, you're in it just strictly for hype or money or whatever it may be. And so trying to get yeah. away from that stigma, you know. I don't think, um, I don't think necessarily, like, obviously the money factor of sneakers is probably what put it, you know, out there, put it on the map for a lot of people that are newer, you know, maybe they had kind of heard of, you know, collecting sneakers or things like that, yeah. but definitely the mainstream media has really put it out there the last couple of years. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. 
Like it's obviously gonna draw some unwanted attention probably, but I mean, honestly, it's, it's just going to open the community to a larger group of people that are more diverse, that bring a whole bunch of different ideas, which will create better products. So I don't know, I'm, I'm down for it. Yep, I agree with you. All right, so kind of along the same vein, you know, you getting started in sneakers, I also wanted to talk about your start in YouTube. So how did you get into uh, creating YouTube content? So I left Finish Line in 2012 um, and still collected sneakers after I quit working there. And But I kind of lost touch with like a lot of people that I had a close connection with when I was there. Um, and I watched sneaker videos the whole time from probably when I worked at Finish Line, I started watching them. Um, like Fomer Simpson, um, I'm trying to think who else I used to really, I mean, he's the one that sticks out the most. His LeBron reviews were always so funny. Um, but I watched, I watched a bunch of sneaker channels back then. Um, and then just over time, just my interest in YouTube in general grew, I guess. And so I started watching more and more sneaker content. And, uh, and then in 2018, when the Fear of God, the Air Fear of God ones released, um, that's, that was kind of the time period, like October, November, December of 2018, where I was really weighing, like, should I do it? Should I not do it? Um, and I, I pretty much waited those three months and then decided in December to, to put out my first video that year. Gotcha. Were there any um, fears or, or blocks to, to creating content? So like, what were your, what were your hangups when you were thinking about creating YouTube stuff? So, so I guess maybe like previously, maybe not as much now, but pretty shy person growing up, like for sure. Didn't like the first day of school, like that sort of thing. And, uh, so I, I had adjusted like having sales jobs over the years, uh, but to me, like putting a video out of myself was definitely intimidating. And so that was something, that was probably my biggest hang up was like, didn't wanna see myself on camera or talk on camera. And uh, I finally, I finally honestly, it was just like, put it out there to see how it would do. Um, and, it, and it did pretty well. And looking back now, it's it's a really cringe video for me to watch, but uh, that's just part of the growing process. Gotcha. So what was uh, that first pair of sneakers that you had in your first YouTube video? Or tell me the story about your first YouTube video. The Air Fear of God Skyline 2s was my first YouTube video. I ended up getting them by accident. I was going to enter a raffle for the Air Fear of God 1s and the store had them and uh, I just showed up and and they were like, hey, we've got these uh, these other Air Fear Gods that released today, <clears throat> excuse me. And I checked them out, honestly, the colorways, it was the black pair and the white pair. And I was like, these are great, like the shape of the shoe I really resonated with. And it was like something that I could wear very casually, like wear it often, like an everyday type sneaker. And it was all black and all white basically. So I picked up those two shoes, went home and was just kind of researching because I didn't know a lot about that shoe. So I was researching, learning some backstory on it. And there was not a lot of information on the Air Fear God colorway. And so I, I looked up videos. There weren't many videos, if any, out there at the time. And so I just saw it as an opportunity as that could be my first video is I'll make a video on this shoe. There's not much information out there and hopefully that will help it gain some traction. Um, and, and it did, it worked out, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I posted it and uh, tweeted it out and tagged 2J's Kicks, um, who was a big inspiration for my channel. And he retweeted it and it, it really pumped the views like the first 24 to 48 hours. And it was like my biggest video for a really long time. It's at, it's at maybe like 50K something like that, gotcha. but that was my biggest video for a very long time. Gotcha, awesome. Um, yeah, I just had my first video that reached 10K and I was super excited about it. So yeah, super excited about it, so. Uh, I'm, I'm still really happy if I hit 10K on a video, like I'm, I'm very happy because I'm, I'm not, 
that's a third of my subscribers, which is a good percentage. So, um, yeah, 10 K that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So you and I come from uh, very different areas, right? I come from uh, rural Virginia. So uh, country of Virginia, and you come from a bigger city being uh, near Atlanta, right? Or yeah. right outside of Atlanta. Yeah. So how do you think that being in that bigger uh, market per se uh, has affected you as far as uh, sneaker knowledge or um, content that you've created and things like that? I think it just from like a population standpoint, it's helped me because um, I'm, I'm able to meet like a lot more people that have the same interests. Um, so I'd say it probably helps me in that way. Like working at Finish Line, I gained a lot of knowledge and did types of trainings and just like learned a lot of history and it really became like a big passion of mine. So I would go online and like read about Kobe's and LeBron's and Katie's and who the designer was and you know, like see like other shoes they've worked on. So like, I really have dove in uh, on my own accord to like learning, but I would say Atlanta's helped me in that way where I'm able to interact with more people. There's other content creators that are here in Atlanta um, that I'm able to interact with and become friends with some of them. And um, it's just a good, a good variety. We've got a, a good amount of stores here that I can, you know, find you know, the newest sneaker or like a, even an older sneaker, we have a, a lot of resources. So I would say big cities, you definitely have, you know, more opportunities to do those kind of things. Gotcha. Yeah, I, um, I have just your basic general release type stores, your, um, your chain stores like Foot Locker, uh, DTLR, um, oh, Foot nice. Action, Champs, things like that. No House of Hoops? No, no House of Hoops, uh, no, uh, Hibbit, no Hibbit Sports, uh, no, neither of those. No and and I, I think we, I have one consignment store um, that is maybe 30 minutes from my house. So one store that would resell sneakers and then the rest of it is right. just general release stuff. I actually went into a Plato's Closet for the first time the other day and they had a lot of like dope used shoes in Plato's yeah, Closet. Yeah, so. Yeah, so something that I may look into more in the future. But yeah, so sadly, I don't have access to a ton of consignment stores and places that would have, you know, more hyped pairs or more uh, limited pairs. But that's okay. Um, I mean, obviously, you have eBay and StockX for a reason. What's, yeah, what's crazy about Atlanta is we have a ton of resale shops um, or consignment shops, but we have very little to essentially zero big retail stores. Like we don't have um, like a flight club, a stadium goods. We don't have like big flagship stores like Kith. Um, so it's really interesting as big as Atlanta is, we still don't compare to like LA, Chicago, New York. Like those are the big three that, that really get a lot of product. Right. So uh, kind of along the same vein of living in Atlanta, um, you live near a lot of other uh, sneaker content creators, right? Um, I know that you are personally friends with Harrison Neville and uh, his cameraman, Nick, who's also your cameraman, yeah. right? And um, uh, I know Tony D2 Wild, he lives in that area. Um, so how do you feel that living near all of those other content creators um, really just pushes you to put out better content? Yeah, um, it's cool. Like Tony's one of the people that I've watched for a long time. His intro was always so funny to me. And so I, that's how I initially started watching his videos. But um, I, yeah, I'm friends with Harrison and we've been friends now for a few years. And it's been really cool because he's a little bit younger than me. And so his ideas and different things that he kind of comes up with um, or ways that he goes about things is different for me. Um, and so we get to kind of like share our perspectives and like how I was explaining earlier, like my history of like how I got into shoes is completely different than his. And so it's cool to like see like why he's into a certain shoe or why I'm into a certain shoe. A lot of times we like the same things, but sometimes we, we disagree or just have different opinions, um, which is cool. And he's been super helpful as far as like answering any questions that I had um, as far as creating content and things like that. So it's been cool to be 
friends with him um, and then like meeting other people in Atlanta is something I, I still need to do. I, I know some people, but I honestly don't know everybody here. So um, it is it is exciting to have people around that that can inspire me to, you know, consistently, which I think that's the biggest thing if you're starting your channel is consistency. Like Tony and Harrison both post very consistently, um, which I admire that probably almost more than anything because it's one of the hardest things I've found. Gotcha. Um, so, I mean, along that same thing, do you have any other tips for any upcoming content creators? Any tips or advice? Yeah, um, yeah, so that would be the biggest one, I think, or it's top three is consistency. Um, you're going to grow your channel the quickest if you post on a consistent basis. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean every day or does that mean once a week? Um, that's up to you. I think it's hard to post. I don't know how people post every day. I Like Kais, Kais posts so often, it is incredible. Um, and so for me, that's it's just not possible at this point. Um, and it's, it's all up to you. It's your personal preferences, how you're, you want to like schedule your daily activities. Um, but I would say consistency is huge. So choose a time period that works for you, whether that's once a week, twice a week, once every two weeks, maybe to start, um, something like that, put out consistent content. Um, another one would be to like, just focus on your content and your channel will grow. It might be slow at first, it might be slow for a month, six months, a year, two years, five years. Um, the growth rate will change. And what from what I've learned um, is that it's best that I just focus on my channel and put out the content. You'll see the growth. Um, like I check my growth, I check the analytics and it's growing much quicker than it was a year ago and even a year before that. And so um, that's just kind of how it works. You've just got to be strong minded to not get caught up in, you know, not seeing the results that you want to see um, and getting like bummed out or something like that. Um, those would be the, like, the two biggest things that people have told me. Um, and I think I see a lot of value in those two things. Yeah, I think also, you know, being wary about comparing yourself to other channels, yeah. right? Seeing the growth of another channel doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily a, a bad thing or, you know, shine negatively on your channel just because another channel is growing faster than yours. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to compare because, like, the algorithm is crazy to figure out. Um, I don't know, I don't know it. And I don't know anybody that does know it. So uh, you just got to put out good content. Um, you know, I think it's good to post at like a good time during the day. So like, I think that's something to keep in mind. Um, post at a consistent time each time is also a big thing. Um, promoting yourself is a big thing. So you want to, you know, join groups and different things that you can promote your videos on platforms, Instagram, TikTok, um, and then like even like like online like social media groups um, that you can join, whether it's on Facebook or other platforms, <clears throat> to just meet people. And um, I don't like to use the word network, but like to meet people and just like organically like talk about your content. Um, I think is a cool thing to do. And to be authentic, um, that's something I wanted to mention. Like, I don't have like a big, crazy, emotional, energetic, like voice. My voice is just like, this is my voice all the time. And I mean, I get excited and things, but as far as putting out content, I like to just talk in my normal voice. Um, and so I think just be authentic. If you are that super excited, super excited, like just loud, um, maybe a little obnoxious, like if that's you, like just own that and be you. Um, and if, if that's not you, like don't try to be that because it's not going to come off authentic on camera. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one thing that I've, um, you know, I enjoy about your videos in particular is, you know, your conversational tone versus some people have a more hyped up tone. Right. And, you know, there's a time and place where I am, 
you know, in the mindset to watch somebody's video that's super hyped up and loud and crazy. And then there's times where I like, you know, I want to watch somebody that's more toned down and casual and, you know, and so I enjoy the casual tone, uh, the conversational style nature that you have when you do your videos. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so Blake, let's give the people what they want, right? Let's, so, let's, uh, show them some sneakers. So, uh, what's one sneaker, uh, in your collection right now that you feel doesn't get, uh, enough love or respect in your opinion? So I had one picked out, but I got a pair in the mail today and it actually it fits that question. And so I'll go ahead and share it. I've got the Air Max One Pata collab that just released. Yes, so I've only had these in my possession for like an hour. Um, and I think they are so sick. The resale price right now, I haven't even, I haven't even posted these yet. Um, the resale price on these right now is like right about 300 to 340. Um, which retail was 160 so like 180 after tax so it's right. you know a little bit under double um retail which is in today's market is not too bad i guess um i don't know this is a really cool it, it also came with the from nike i don't know if this is like how it's supposed to work but i got the bracelet so that's cool okay. um and they all come with this box as far as i know do what? Well, that's all right. So I wanted to get the special box pair and which I like, I think everybody thought this is like the special box, <clears throat> but this is the box that came from Nike and on StockX they changed the listing information to saying like regular box, special box. Now it says with bracelet, without bracelet. They just changed it today. Um, and so I think they all come with this cool black box um but i think it's just with a bracelet or without maybe uh but this shoe right here i would say is underrated honestly in my opinion if you look back on previous pata air max one collapse they are basically all fire they're amazing um the fifth anniversary pair is a all-time grail for me and um i just can't believe like these came out the quality on them is fantastic and they're like 300 bucks so i don't know i don't think that's too bad of a price i mean it's not cheap 300 dollars is 300 dollars um but i think as far as like getting like a really solid sneaker i think this is a really good one awesome yeah so uh, i mean we just we now live in a time where there are just so many sneakers releasing Yes, that's, yeah, that's a big fact. Yeah, that, like, dope sneakers can get, you know, kind of swept under the rug or, you know, pushed to the wayside because, you know, you have, you're focused on the next thing. On to the next one. Yeah, like, what's coming out next week? Yeah. Yeah. So, I had one behind me. Um, so, I wanted to show off uh, the Jordan 4 Sashikos. I don't know if you've seen these. I have seen those. Um, I don't. I might have seen them at SneakerCon, maybe. I don't know that I've seen a pair in hand. I've definitely seen images. Yeah, so these were European only release, and so okay. I had to go through StockX to grab them. But um, how much were they? Oh, right after release, when people were getting their pairs in, probably yeah. around I think they were like three twenty-five at that time. So not terrible. <laughs> But it's a yeah. colorway that's never going to release again, right? It's never going to get right. retro, and so the yeah. fact that you, you know, you have them in your collection, I mean, yeah. you know, whatever the yeah. number is out there is who has them, and yeah. so I thought it was really cool. Sashiko is a really cool, you know, embroidery pattern, Japanese embroidery pattern. Um, the netting is actually embroidered; it's not actual netting; uh -oh, it's stitched. Okay. So I thought that okay. was really cool, and then all the patterning is different the the two shoes are uh, they are mismatched so you got red laces on one blue laces on the other and then all those like semi-translucent aqua hits so like on your heel tab and on your cages and stuff like that so i think this is a really underrated sneaker a lot of people in the united states probably didn't even know this released and i would assume I don't have them yeah, I, I knew it released and I was honestly trying to do a video on them, um, but I wasn't able to get a pair. And and then yeah, like 
they slipped my mind. Um, they look cool though, especially like the detail. Yeah, so this is all denim. It's an all denim upper, so it's really cool. Ah, okay. I thought, I, I knew parts of it. Yeah, it's almost like a super stitched version of the, the Levi's. The Levi's, okay. Yeah, which those were really popular. So see, it's like things like that, where it's like the Levi's are really popular. Those similar, like a little different of a variation not selling for as much. There's a shoe that that reminded me of that at the time it released, I'll tell you the name, it was the J2K Jordan 7. There was two colorways. There was a, like a tan and then a navy pair, J2K Retro 7. If you look those up on StockX, they're like $1,500 right now, maybe two grand, it, which is a ton of money for, especially for Jordan 7. Um, and when those released, I worked at Finish Line, they were so easy to get. They were so easy to get. Like nobody wanted them, and now they're they're super expensive. So sometimes you you just never know. Yeah, and so I think that that so uh, the Shishiko video that I did was probably I don't know kind of the the video that I think really boosted my channel. It's got about thirty five hundred views, but I was one of the only American YouTubers that had put out a video on them at the time. So yeah, they definitely boosted my channel. I gained, you know, probably 100, 200 subscribers just off of that video. That's really good. That's huge. Um, I think I have heard from, I have some friends in London um, and then I, I talked to some people from some other countries and I definitely think there is like a big interest um, in watching like people from the USA review shoes like right. from what I understand is like they watch they watch the people from their country they review them but we also get a lot more sneakers than a bunch of other countries um and so they watch a lot of United States YouTubers as well you know it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because so my most popular videos my probably my three most popular videos have been streetwear videos in which I've actually um hit on like the Travis Scott merch with the British khakis and also with the uh the fragments I hit the t-shirt and the hoodie Right. Okay. And so I did videos on all three of them and all three of them are extremely popular as far as my channel goes. Um, and it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny how people from other countries will comment and they'll ask for your opinion, right? They'll, they'll ask, uh, I'm such and such centimeters tall and such and such kilograms. And I'm like, I have no clue what that means, you know? <laughs> And so I have to go and do the math and, you know, to try to give you a suggestion as to what size you should yeah. wear. But it's yeah. pretty crazy that people from other countries will watch and they'll ask your advice on things, you know, even though you come from such a different culture. That's good, though. And honestly, like, I respect you for replying to those types of questions. I try to reply to as many comments and things, DMs. I reply to every DM that I get on Instagram, basically. Um, and it's because I appreciate somebody like valuing my opinion on something or, you know, wanting to ask me, um, whatever it may be. So I'm always, I always try to give back the respect, um, and answer those questions. Cause it's, that's, you know, what I like. Awesome. All right. So, um, moving on from sneakers that are not as loved or respected as we think they should be. Um, how about your favorite sneaker pickup story? So your favorite time that you had to camp out for something or whatever it may be. Um, probably my favorite story to, to share is from 2012. And it was the all-star release that year. It was the LeBron 9 Big Bangs, the Kobe um, Galaxy pair, the KD4 Galaxy. Um, There's a Dick pair of Dave White Ones. Um, there were some Zoom rookies that released, um, and there was a Galaxy Foam Posit that released. The Galaxy Foam Posit was so cool looking to me at the time. Uh, people were airbrushing like Nike Elite Socks, Galaxy, like Galaxy that year was just insane. And the Galaxy Foam Posit, I thought looked really cool. <clears throat> and I got some information like which stores were gonna have them, which now they just put it on sneaker news but at the time you had to kind of like find out and know which stores were going to get the actual shoe that you wanted um which there was a few in atlanta that got them i went and slept in my car at, at uh the mall 
and and waited there the whole next day. They ended up setting up a line. I was able to get near the front of the line, and uh, and I was I think I was one of the last pairs, honestly. But I got the Galaxy phone posits for retail. Um, it was really crazy, like 24 to 36 hours. Um, that's probably by far just the the memories and the people I met and things from that. Um, it's probably one of my favorite sneaker pickup. What did uh what did phone posits retail for in 2012? Um, I think all together because they had like this lift off like shirt that that uh they Nike made um that said lift off and it had the galaxy print. Um so I bought the shirt to like accompany the shoes and I think I have a picture of it somewhere but um of the receipt and the shoes but I think it was like 245 is what I paid total 265 maybe with a t-shirt something like that. They're they're close. At the time, I sold them um, for eighteen hundred dollars, okay. which was insane. And I ended up buying a motorcycle with that money. <laughs> um, but they went down after that. They went down to maybe like a thousand for a long time, or under a thousand, something like that. And then they've climbed back up. I've seen pairs at sneaker cons um, that were in that $1,500, $2,000 range. So I don't know like on StockX what, they, what they're what uh, they reselling for, but probably, probably something like that. Pretty crazy. That's a cool, that's a cool pickup story. Um, yeah. So, I mean, in, in wrapping up the, uh, the interview, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff, hit on a lot of stuff. Um, what's coming up for you? So any videos or events that, you know, you want anybody to know about? I've got a video dropping tomorrow, which I don't know when this video is going to come out, but I'm putting out a video tomorrow, Tuesday, um, on this shoe right here, which is one that I think now that I've had time with this shoe and I've had it on feet, I've changed out the laces and everything. I think this is a top 10 sneaker of 2021 and it is the Nike. Yeah. Big claim, right? So, uh, I think this is a top 10 release. And when I say that, I'm kind of specifying Nike and Jordan. Um, like New Balance has put out like a ton of crazy shoes this year. So like this might not make like the all time top 10 list. So I'll kind of specify Nike Jordan. I consider this to be a top 10 sneaker of the year. Um, the, the details on it are crazy. Uh, you get some extra green laces which I, I swapped out. So I've got a video dropping on this shoe right here on feet. Um, I also like cut a panel, so, um, which I'm gonna end up cutting the whole shoe eventually, but I did cut a panel in the video, swap the laces on feet, glow in the dark outsoles. So we've got some shots of that too. So I'm really excited to release the video. I've been working on it um, all day today after work, after my regular job and yeah. That's um, coming up tomorrow. I'm gonna cut the whole shoe as another video. And then I'll be hitting some sneaker cons, uh, maybe some other of the smaller events as well. Uh, I'd like to go to any event that my schedule allows, like I'll go. Cause I just like to go and like hang out, see shoes, like whatever. Um, so yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. invite me. I'll, I'll try to figure out a way to get out. Sweet. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you for taking the time and, uh, you know, going through the interview with me. Uh, thank you very much. And very honored. Awesome. So uh, thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you for tuning in and hopefully there's more interview series in the future. So with yeah. that said, peace out and we will see you soon.